So the final race of day two is a match. It's a three mile two photo novice chase between Moons of Jupiter for Craig Beckwith and Richo Boreas for Martin Lederman. And that's me. So the two of them then called in and away. So I'm probably talking to an audience of one because there's probably only Craig watching this. There's probably nobody else the slightest bit interested in who was to win this race apart from Craig Beckwith and myself as they get to the first and mine jumped it slightly better so Richo Boreas is the leader then but now Moons of Jupiter is on the outside and goes into the lead so Craig Beckwith in front then with Moons of Jupiter Richo Boreas in second for Martin Lidham that's me both these trainers already had a winner this season so one of them will get up onto two which is no mean feat in the first week of the season as they get over that ditch and Moons of Jupiter is the one who's going on and leads by about three lengths at this moment in time. Skips over the third. And moons of Jupiter in front. Richo Boreas is in second. And not really much else to say at the moment. As they make their way down towards the fourth. Oh, and the leader. Oh, they both made it, but the leader gave it a lot of air, and Richard Boreas walked straight through it. So that doesn't look too good. We're going to end up with no finishes if we can jump like that. They're coming down towards the next end, and Moons of Jupiter is clearing the lead and gets over it nicely. On oh, Richard Boreas, second, they both jumped much better that time. And Moons of Jupiter is a good five or six lengths clear of Richo Boreas as they get into the next. Uh, all, safe, all, all safely over it, both safely over it. Richo Boreas jumped it quite well actually and he's now getting much closer to the leader. Moons of Jupiter as they come to the seventh. Oh and he's gone, the leader's gone. Moons of Jupiter has crashed out of the race which cues Craig Beckwith to turn off and leaves me talking to myself so it's just me myself and my horse at the moment then <laughs> as um I don't know what happens next if this one falls as well they pop over that ditch we've still got two miles to go so the interesting thing now is what do we do for the next two miles do we bother to commentate on our own horse winning the race as long as it doesn't fall over or what? I don't know. It's um, a strange situation. But as I said, there's probably nobody listening to it apart from me now because I don't think anybody else would have watched a two horse race and they haven't got any runners in. Um, I suppose, thinking about it, poor old Alex Cherry's got to watch it because he's got a handicap here. So, anyway, Alex, this horse of mine is really, really slow. It's not very good at all. Um, and it wouldn't have a chance of winning it if there were more than one other horse in the race. So, it doesn't need to be given a handicap rating of about 150 or something. I would suggest it's no better than a hunter, really. Um, so just bear that in mind. It's his local track as well, you see, so one of its local tracks. It's only trained 10 miles down the road, so it feels at home. So it's running a much better race than it normally would. So don't forget to take that into account. I'm sure Craig Beckwith will probably tell you that Moons of Jupiter is not up to much either, so he doesn't need much of a handicap mark either so anyway there we go so what do we do next it's um, a mile and a half still to go there's not been enough happened so far this season for me to be able to waffle on about anything too much or moan the only thing i've moaned about so far is the lack of runners and i think that at some point in the season if we don't get some extra runners in this next week on the um transfer week we may have to start thinking of pulling some races or amalgamating some because to be honest, I'm doing the commentating on my own at the moment, and to be on the jumps anyway, to be commentating on 40 flat rate, 40 national hunt races a week when they've all got five or six runners in is going to get pretty tedious. So let's hope we can sort that out in the next few weeks. A lot of horses haven't been out racing this week. And again, I don't know why I'm saying this because I'm sure there isn't a single soul on the planet who's listening to this apart from me. As Richard Boreas jumps over that one. And 
Well done, let's test, let's test it out. Let's test it out with a bad, really bad joke that I heard the other day. I was walking past the greengrocers and heard a load of vegetables talking. I thought, crikey, that was interesting. Talking vegetables, but it turns out it was just jo it was just chives talking. But anyway, I should have said before and made some sort of Bee Gees reference, shouldn't I? So I didn't even make a very good job of telling the joke. Anyway, Stu would be good at this race if Stu was back. Hopefully, Stu will be back later in the season. He'd be telling you all sorts of weird and wonderful things. I could tell you many stories about Toaster. Days I've been to Toaster, I watched some good racing. He used to call it Tingle Creek. I used to run it now and again, and lots of good horses running it. Uh, this one, Richo Boreas, over it in the lead, clear of the loose horse. He's only got to pop over a couple more. And a rather undeserved double will be in the bag for my stable. We took the race early with Mech to Combat, but this one. Really, is there's always going to be a bit of a fluke, whichever one won, wasn't there? Only two in it, but when one falls over, it's very difficult to catch it as a, as a win. In fact, in many ways, it'll probably ruin this horse's season because it'll get handicapped as a winner today. And um, never get another look at But anyway, race them towards the line. The local horse takes it, which Boreas wins it. Day two ends on a bit of a low note. Oh, not necessarily a low note for me, as it's a winner for me. But there you go. We'll be back tomorrow, hopefully, with a few more runners in the races. So Richard Boreas takes it for Martin Linham and Craig Beckwith's horse fell at the seventh. And we'll be back tomorrow. <laughs>